Good morning, Your Excellency. Ladies and gentlemen, today Holland is only one LNG tanker away from Qatar. Gas is as old as the earth itself, but yet it never ceases to amaze us. Over the last decades, gas has, has turned from a local com commodity into a global one. It is increasingly connecting all of our countries into a worldwide gas web, a web in which Holland is becoming the central hub for Northwestern Europe. These words should have been spoken to you, ladies and gentlemen, by my boss, the Vice Prime Minister of the Netherlands, Maxime Verhaag, who is also responsible for energy policies. But as you probably know, there is a European Minister's Council meeting today, an urgent one on the events in Japan. And that's the reason why he couldn't be here. On behalf of the Dutch government, I want to present all my sympathy and support to the Japanese government and its people. I will now read to you the address that Minister Verhaag wanted to deliver to you personally. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my pleasure to welcome you in Amsterdam. It's a rare privilege to have such a distinguished audience from all over the world, from all segments of the world. I'd like to thank the organizers, in particular our host sponsor, Shell, for making this possible. I realize that promoting gas to people from gas is a bit like preaching to the converted. But this is what I'm going to do. I'm also going to tell you what you can expect of me and what we like you to do. Will the 21st century be the golden age of gas? That, in any event, is what the International Energy Agency believes, a leading institute which will be headed, as you probably know, soon by my previous boss, the Dutch Minister of Economic Affairs of Ener and Energy, Maria van der Hoeven. Notwithstanding the uncertainties about the energy future, there is a growing consensus among policymakers, business leaders, and energy experts that the outlook for natural gas is bright, and with good reason, rightly so. Both gas demand and supply have increased dramatically in recent years. They are expected to increase by 40% until 2035. Of course, you will know why. In its most recent five-year plan, China aims at doubling its consumption of natural gas by 2015. Meanwhile, European gas consumption is also expected to increase substantially as more and more power plants are relying on gas. In the Netherlands, for instance, no less than 60% of all electricity is generated by gas-fired power plants. Gas also adds flexibility to coal-fired and nuclear power plants and serves as a backup for wind and solar energy. Gas prices could have soared in line with demand, but they haven't. Companies have invested heavily to meet present and future demand. I accompanied Queen Beatrix of the Netherlands on a state visit to Qatar, the world's number one producer of liquefied natural gas. We were heavily impressed by the scale of the LNG and gas to liquid operations of Shell Pearl. The company has invested some 20 billion euros in what may be the largest industrial complex in the world now. As a result of such heavy investment, global gas supplies have increased dramatically LNG production is growing very fast. Europe's LNG imports went up 22% last year. 22%, ladies and gentlemen. The world's LNG capacity is expected to triple between 2012 and 2015, and LNG should account for one-third of supply growth by 2035. Unconventional gas is not a game-changer. I'm sure of that. I was two weeks ago in the U.S. myself, I watched what was going on there, and it is a game changer, ladies and gentlemen. The U.S. is leading the way. It has seen a mind-boggling 20-fold increase in unconventional gas output in the past decade, 20-fold. Many other countries are following its lead. And we recently granted a license to Quadrilia Resources for test drilling near the Dutch town of Buxtel. In short, while demand is increasing, gas prices are becoming more competitive worldwide. The trend is likely to be further enhanced by environmental regulation. Stricter standards for coal-fired power plants demands to reduce CO2. These bright prospects for gas, ladies and gentlemen, are good news for our country, for the Netherlands, for Europe. 
We've been a gas producing country for half a century now, following the disco discovery of gas near the northern village of Slochteren. At that time, 50 years ago, Slochteren was the largest field in the world. It still is the tenth largest, but it will be depleted within a generation. Isn't it a paradox to be that our future as a gas country, while the field will be depleted, is only getting brighter? In the 10 years from 2005 to 2015, no less than 20 billion euros will have been invested in the Netherlands in the exploration and production of gas, in transport infrastructure, in gas-fired power plants. In business, in politics, and among the Dutch public, support for gas is widespread. We believe that gas is here to stay, and we want it to stay, because of three reasons. It's crucial for our economy, it can help meet its climate goals, and it is a sure secure supply for the future. Let me elaborate a bit on this. First, gas equals income and jobs. Holland is the largest gas producer in the EU and the eighth largest worldwide. The industry provides jobs to 66,000 people, represents 3% of GDP and 8% of government revenue. Gas is in every household. Almost every household is connected to the gas grid and the share of gas in the Dutch energy mix is 40% compared with an average 25% in the EU as a whole. Second, I don't need to spell it out for you, gas is the cleanest of all fossil fuels. We're aiming for a low carbon society in 2050 and we just need gas there. Sustainable energy, ladies and gentlemen, will not do the trick alone. There's enough energy that's just not enough. Switching from more polluting fossil fuels to gas will help us reach our short and long-term goals. Gas can help us make the transition to an almost carbon-free society in a cost-effective way. And third, of course, gas is secure. Political uncertainty in the last weeks showed us that we need not rely on one single source. We need to diversify our supply, our routes, and our fuels. Gas will be available in the Netherlands and Northwestern Europe for decades to come, not only from our own fields, but also from foreign sources. Our regional gas market is one of the most liquid in the world. Gas is and should remain a central component in our energy mix. So what, we will, what will we do as Dutch government to enhance gas? First of all, we will seek cooperation within Europe and beyond to increase the share in the Northwest European energy mix, to develop the European energy market, to meet climate goals, to improve interconnection. I can assure you that the Dutch government is highly motivated in this area. We aim to firmly anchor gas in our future and present energy system. We believe countries should do what they do best, should focus on what they do best. And we're very good at gas. That's why I decided we, we go an extra mile for the energy sector in the Netherlands. As you, want, as you know, we pointed out nine top sectors and energy is one of them for the Dutch economy. Our former Shell CEO, Jeroen van der Veer, now leads a lean and I hope a very mean team that will shortly be advising me on how to strengthen the energy sector. I see three priorities we certainly agree upon. First, let's develop our gas hub strategy further and comply with emission targets. Second, let's further improve the business climate, cut red tape and stimulate investment in new technology. And third, let's foster cooperation and innovation. Our commitment to strengthening Holland's position as the gas hub of Northwestern Europe will mean that we will continue to develop a stable legal and regulatory environment. It means we will promote investment in LNG and gas storage. Gas storage allows us to meet increased demand in wintertime if supplies are disrupted. It also stimulates trade and further development of the European gas market. That's why I'm convinced that we need to go on with the Bergameer gas project in this country. It's very important. It's very important for our future. Fostering game-changing innovation is an essential part of our policy for these top sectors. New technologies will allow us to explore and exploit new fields and new varieties of gas, to create new applications of gas and more economic activity. That's why I will be supporting a range of current initi initiatives, a new energy institute in the north of Holland, new strong energy clusters such as Energy Valley, new opportunities for unconventional gas and LNG, such as the use of LNG ships in the North Sea and domestic waterways. 
legendary gentlemen, challenges have, have, have helped to us become what we are today. Our struggle with water has made us experts in water management. Surmounting the limits of our territory has made us the second largest exporter in accurate food. That's not only innovation, it's also cooperation. Cooperation with you, between business, research and government. That's why fostering cooperation is very important among these three players. Stakeholders outside the industry, inside the industry. What do we expect from you then, from the energy industry? We can only expect to be successful if you make the investment. The gas hub, the Dutch gas hub, requires large investment of 7.7 billion euros. But I know you, it will pay off 21 billion euros according to the same report. So you will invest, but you are in the driving seat. You are making the investment decisions. You can effectively increase the share of Dutch gas and you're in the European energy mix. You can make gas greener and cleaner. You can help us make the case for gas within the EU. You can let us know what governments should do to ease barriers, lift obstacles and pave the way for gas. We have every reason to believe you will do your part. I also welcome the recent report by the European Gas Advocacy Forum, which includes Shell and eight other companies. They rightly stress that gas can help us make the transition to a low carbon society in the quickest, cheapest and most pragmatic way possible. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope and I believe that the next few days will provide you with new insights into crucial issues facing the global gas industry. Above all, I hope that it will give you new incentives to team up with partners and research institutions. I believe that 50 years from now, we will still be needing fossil fuels. Gas is our smartest and cleanest bet. It may be evanescent, but gas is here to stay, both as a transition fuel and a destination fuel. Gas is fairly clean, readily available and highly flexible. The Dutch government is firmly committed to securing Holland's position as the gas hub of Northwestern Europe. That includes developing possibilities for gas storage, an excellent business climate and cooperation at the European level. But you in the industry call the shots. As long as you continue to invest and innovate, the future of gas will be even brighter than it is today and it will benefit our societies even more. Thank you very much for your attention.